But what does it do? It changes size whenever it wants and corrupts anyone who touches it. No, we're not talking about Michael's penis all night again. No, the one ring from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, obviously, I was... I was being hilarious. I actually was talking about I watched 20 hours of movie, okay? And I still don't get why people are lording over this ring. I mean, yeah, invisibility is great and all, but this is a world where there are like wizards and lava monsters and Stephen Colbert. In that world, invisibility power should be like a fancy iPhone case, not like a central global conflict. Is this what we're gonna talk about tonight? Things that Katie still doesn't understand yet? Because I have a job. Like in my life, I have a job to go to. I can't live here now. Invisibility is corrupting by its very nature. In, in the Silmarillion, they, t they tell you right off the, the bat. The short answer is that the one ring controls a bunch of other rings. The black cloak horsey guys used to be nine human kings, but now their magic rings enslave them to Sauron. Okay, so that is why the ring is so evil? He's bad for kings? Then why does every power-hungry jerk want a piece of it? The ring is evil because it's got a hunk of Sauron's soul in it. She, she's not even trying. Maybe it isn't that Sauron's evil. Maybe the ring is evil. What? Did we just find the thing that we're gonna talk about tonight? No, 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 no. That's a false premise. Not only does Sauron have a volcano lair and a dehumanizing faceless helmet, he also betrays the Maiar to join Melkor, later called Morgoth. He's every single bad guy trope wrapped up in one. He's Blofeld plus a stormtrooper plus Judas. Betrayed who to the what now? He's dipping into the Silmarillion. He does this sometimes. I'm sorry. Lord of the Rings is very important in my family. Does that count? Judges. Overruled. Think about it. We don't see Sauron be evil. We're just told he's evil by his enemy. Sauron needs only this ring to cover all the lands of a second darkness. At the beginning of the whole trilogy, the good guys are winning and hard. That's why Lord Spiky Hat has to come out and do battle in the first place. He's his team's last hope. And think about who gives that opening narration. Some crazy old forest hermit. They're not the most reliable sources of oral history. I learned that the hard way. And Spiky Hat's so own metal pants does seem to be leading a ragtag group of lovable misfits. Oops. Life meets back on the menu, boy! Yeah, well, the human armor looks like it's individually tailored, like somebody's dad owned the armor store. The camp trust fund. Attack. Sauron is an underdog who's bringing together an impoverished people to fight for freedom against oppressive foreign forces. So was Hitler. Too soon. It was 70 years ago. Too soon for an argument. You don't bring out Hitler this early. You save Hitler till the third act break. Okay, well, the point I was quite aptly making is that just because you're the underdog doesn't automatically make you good. We're still talking about cave monsters sacking an otherwise bustling and peaceful metropolis. Oh, you're talking about Pokyo Penis Towers, Bird? It's Gundor. You know it's Gundor. Seems to me that the orcs just want to slice some Middle Earth pie. I mean, every shot in that movie looks like it should say, paid for by the Tourism Board of New Zealand somewhere, except for Mordor. Rowney McShield Fight Man calls Mordor... The Barren Wasteland. Riddled with fire and ash and dust. Can you blame any sentient creature for not wanting to live there? I, I don't want to live there. Michael's probably the only one who wants to live there. They have excellent schools. Uh, and I think it looks like that because the orcs treat their surroundings badly. It's like a proto-Captain Planet thing where the environment reflects the shittiness of your soul inside. Oh, what a convenient worldview. Anyone who lives somewhere terrible must deserve it, right? Admit it, the orcs are a subjugated class, the lowest race. They're never going to get a chance at the Middle Earth dream. Are you really gonna play the fictional fantasy race card? Hey, I calls him likes us, sees him. But to be honest, race isn't the biggest problem in Middle Earth. It's immortality. Immortality prevents progress. How so? Dan, I want you to do me a favor and conceive of a world where Thomas Jefferson is still alive. Okay. Oh my God, she's right. Thomas Jefferson was great, but he also thought that a woman's responsibility was to make sure her sexy body odor didn't distract men from their jobs. And the slaves. And the slaves, obviously, I mean, the slaves. Imagine TJ still in power and alive and with an ancient grudge against England. Do you think America would have helped out in World War II if TJ was president? Probably not, I bet. Next stop, Hitlerville. You just said- Now is the appropriate time. The point is, he was forward-thinking and awesome in the 18th century, but he is a racist cartoon villain by today's standards. And that's what the elves are in The Lord of the Rings, a bunch of immortals just with these entrenched views, running around, having slaves, and waging wars, and using outdated slang, and then sailing off into heaven, and man, these movies are weird. In a way, Mordor's actually the most equitable country in Middle-earth. 
The elves all live in these secluded forest kingdoms. Humans are wary of other races and barely get along themselves. But the orcs, when the orcs march into battle, they do it as a big multi-ethnic team. I mean, Legolas and Gimli take three full movies to become friends, but the orcs and the men from the east gel right away without even having to engage in an extreme sports-style murder competition. You know, I bet in Mordor they have gay rights and universal health care, too. Well, what would Sauron care? He's just the eye. Mordor is a rich multicultural stew with a large base of working poor. No wonder the elves and Sauron hate it so much. No, hating orcs is not a one-to-one -one parallel to real-world racism. The Silmarillion also tells us that orcs are essentially just elvish POWs, captured by Melkor, later called Morgoth, and then tortured and deformed into insanity. Why would you root for actual reavers? These are real world monsters, not some elvish minority. Wow, that is not something I knew, and it's way worse. That's like if America took her returning veterans with mental problems and just shoved them out to the <clears throat> outskirts of society alone to be forgotten. I made myself sad. Losing ground, Soren. Pull it together. Man, if the elves hate the orcs for being torture victims with PTSD, then their culture is way more Nazi-esque than we thought. Elrond does seem pretty peeved that his daughter might enter into a mixed-race marriage. You gotta keep that pure Aryan immortality blood in the family, right? And we haven't even touched on the war crimes yet. Just imagine the orcs as real people with thoughts and feelings, and the whole thing just becomes this homage to sociopathic cruelty on the battlefield. Why did you do that? You promised to set him free. I freed his wretched head from his miserable shoulders. And that is the problem with every fantasy universe. They rewind it all the way back to the Middle Ages, and their worldview ends up going with it. Game of Thrones wrote out pretty much every non-white character, and then Harry Potter, Lavender Brown, goes from being black to white in the movie where she finally shags Ron. But Lord of the Rings is the Ur example, the seminal modern story that drags us into this fictional white supremacy. We have nothing, this. Mm. Sauron makes good points. Yeah, this one really got to me. It might have ruined Lord of the Rings forever. Anyone who likes Lord of the Rings is racist now. Maybe it's escapist because it allows us to escape from having to have empathy for people that are different than us. Yeah, us being white people, anyway. So yeah, us, literally the four of us. Hey, if your parents are actually huge Tolkien nerds though, are you really named after Sauron? Why would they give you the evil name? I got a lot of siblings. Probably just ran out of characters, I think. Oh my god, is there a Radagast buoy walking the earth somewhere? Man, you guys must have been so cool in high school. Ooh, Glorfindel buoy, please take me to prom. Glorfindel passed, actually. It's not a huge deal, she was a huge bitch. The whole family hated her. She went to, in and out of prison for a while. It's her own fault. F fell in front of a train drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine what it would be like if Thomas Jefferson were alive today. Okay. Oh my god, she's really <laughs> 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 <laughs>